Juan. I'm not on. No, I see I was on. There we go. I'm on. I'm on. Excellent. So well, let's try that again. Hallelujah. Welcome to worship this morning. It's a little bit brisk and you've braved the cold, but it's nice and warm in here. And it's certainly warm as we share in fellowship one with another this morning. We would like to acknowledge our Creator God, the one who has placed us here, the one who has given us this earth to care for, the one who has um, sent his Son to earth to die for our sins. We acknowledge him, our Creator, Preserver and Governor of all things. And we also wish to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land on which we gather here today, the Ghana people, and pay tribute to their elders past, present and emerging. And remind ourselves that the Salvation Army and we as members and friends of the Salvation Army are committed to reconciliation at every possible opportunity. I have a call to worship to share today, which is one of our lectionary readings. And I need you to bear with me because it's not going to sound like the usual sort of thing that we start church with. Okay, do you trust me? Excellent. Well, (laughs) not sure if that's a good thing or not. Here we go. So it's from Psalm 13. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. 
And my enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Amen. Amen. Uh, Friday morning, news broke across the Salvation Army world of a tragedy in the territory of Nigeria where a busload of officers who was returning from being at five days in officers' councils was hit from behind by a large truck. And as a result, 12 officers were promoted to glory, the soldier who was driving the bus and a baby that was also on board. The rest of the occupants of the bus uh, are in hospital having treatment with varying degrees of um, devastation. One of my ICO delegates was from Nigeria. She is safe and well, but her heart is breaking because this is part of her colleagues who, have, who are now no longer. And um, five of, there were five officer couples who are part of the dead. And so that leaves children at home now orphaned. And so while it might feel like it's a bit of a downer, I think that the greatest tool that we have in our arsonry is prayer. So I would like to invite you to pray with me just now. Father God, it, I, we can't even begin to fathom the pain and grief and loss and devastation that has occurred in Nigeria in these past few days. And I just ask, Lord, that you would help that territory, that you would help them with their grief that you would help them with um, all of the plans that now need to be put in place as they make funeral arrangements and uh, arrange for appointments to be filled in other ways. Lord, we are an international movement and we, we are one in that way. And so we just ask, Lord, that you would um, allow our friends in Nigeria and across the world who are already hurting just to feel our love and prayers for them just now. We know that you are mighty and you are the God of comfort and peace. You are close to the brokenhearted. And so we think of all those who are f affected, family, friends, colleagues, uh, co congregations, and we just ask, Lord, that you would be close to them especially. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, today is the 2nd of July. Where are that? Now, the 2nd of July is what is known in Salvation Army world as Founders Day. Now, Founders with an apostrophe at the end of the S, which means that both of our founders um, are, part, are included in this. So on this day, quite a few years ago, the, the Christian Mission had a tent meeting, and so this is the date that has been chosen. Founders Day has moved to a couple of different dates over the years, but this is where it's landed now, the 2nd of July. And so it is not a day that we celebrate and worship William Booth or his wife Catherine or even the Salvation Army. We worship and we celebrate God who raised up these people and brought them together to create our church congregation um, across the world that we have. Um, I was fortunate to go on a tour of East London when I was in London um, recently and we were told about probably the half a dozen or so agencies that were all started at the sa around the same time who were there to bring help and health and healing to people in East London. And of all of them, the Salvation Army is um, certainly the largest, the one with the most longevity, and um, most of them have fallen by the wayside. So the question I ask myself is, well, why is that? And I believe it's because God was at the heart and God has something that he wants the Salvation Army to do across the world. So um, what has been um, created for us is a really cute little clip that kind of gives you an introduction for those who don't know about um, the founding of the Salvation Army. There's no, uh, 
narr- narration, that's the word, there's no narration, so you've got to get your reading eyes ready to go because there's lots of words that will come up on the screen, okay? Yes, excellent, all right, let's go. song than the one we were about to sing. Now, we are not going to sing all seven verses, all right? We will use all seven verses, but we're not singing all seven verses. So, Angie, if you could pop up verse one for me, because there is a little bit of instructions that we need to give. So, the first verse says, O boundless salvation, deep ocean of love, O fullness of mercy Christ brought from above, the whole world redeeming. Amen? So rich and so free, now flowing for all men, and then we sing, now flowing for all men, and then we sing, now flowing for all men, come roll over me. So always, the, la- the first part of the last line we sing three times before we finish it off. All right? Clear? Excellent. When we're singing about now flowing for all men, we mean all humankind. Yes? All mankind. So I'm going to invite you to stand. And with the help of the band, we will sing the first two verses.
that um, there's people that want to clap and that's okay, you can clap. You can clap during that last line. You can clap all through the song. I don't mind because in the Salvation Army, we're happy for you to be rejoicing and praising the Lord whichever way you like. Yes? Excellent. All right. We are going to read together verse 3. All right. Let's go. My tempers are fitful. My passions are strong. They bind my poor soul and they force me to wrong. Beneath thy blessed billows, deliverance I see. O come, mighty ocean, and roll over me. Amen. Let's sing verse 4. actually William Booth himself who wrote these words and he wrote them and the night before heading off to a special congress because he wanted something to help you know bring it all together and uh, I think the original version had something like 16 verses or something it was anyway um, I love that line my life has been joyless and useless for years yes Um, but with Jesus and his saving grace we can make a difference all right verse 5 we're going to read together O ocean of mercy, of longing I've stood on the brink of thy wonderful life-giving flood. Once more I have reached this soul-cleansing sea. I will not go back till it rolls over me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to sing the last two verses together. And I've asked the band specifically to do something between verse 6 and 7 so that we can just bring verse 7 home with gusto. Yes? So whether or not they do it, I don't know, but I asked. So we will wait and see. All right, verse 6 and 7. Please be seated. Thank you for that. Thank you, band. And uh, now we're going to hand over for the good news. Good morning, Eagle Farm. And Greg's not here, so you get me instead. Greg is at home. Please pray for him. He has the man flu. So men, extra bit of prayer for him today. We know how bad the man flu is. Just look after him and make sure you keep him in his prayers. All right, 
It is that time of year where the second term is over and it's almost school holidays again, which means it's a Just Brass concert time. So if you are available and you want to come and see what happens on a Thursday afternoon here during the week and what these kids do, come along at 5pm this Thursday and come and hear the amazing talents of the children of the Just Brass crew. They do very, very well. For those of you who are interested in uh, looking like one of us, um, our polo shirts uh, order forms have been extended by another week just to make sure you get your orders in. So see, is it Kathy now or Nat during the week? But get in this week, otherwise you have to do the orders and you'll miss out. If you want again, do something which uh, gets to know the Salvation Army a bit more and on Founders Day, here we go. We're looking for expressions of interest of those who would like to know more, who are not an adherent or a soldier or, or would like a refresher course by all means uh, for, office, for soldiership. Uh, yeah, for officership. We'll go there as well. Why not? We need them as well. I saw uh, the uh, divisional support officer's head cock sideways. Yeah, well, officership as well we might find if you want to do officership. By all means, uh, we are never too old to do that. So we're just looking for expressions for interest. Please talk to Greg after the meeting. He's not here. So if you are keen, come and see me. Um, or talk to Greg during the week when you catch up with him. Um, this Wednesday, for those that are around, from 9 o'clock on Wednesday morning, we are having car park lights installed uh, to make sure Sue can get to her car safely when it's dark. You're welcome, Sue. Um, so they'll be here doing lights. So when you're here for um, Home League, uh, car parks will be blocked off in different locations where the lights are so they can get in there. So just be aware of that. This month, it is July, we're looking for our community uh, donation bin to go into some food. This month, we want to look at doing the Easy Make uh, noodle cups and soups. We would like to be able to provide something during the colder days of winter with some hot water and a microwave that people can come in and heat up some noodles and have something to eat when they're cold, when they come in for a shower or for any reason. So like your fantastic cup, if you see the advert, yep to the, yep to the cup. Google it, have a look, yep, to the cup, you'll know what we're talking about. Um, just so we can heat up, put them in the microwave, um, put some hot water in and they can have something to eat. So not big packets of noodles, not big um, instant, you know, um, baking carbonara pastas, you know, but the easy cup pastas and cups of soups that we can do. And it's Jill's birthday today. 75, is that right? Yeah, a little birdie. We've got lots of little birdies. So I think a happy birthday. Normally it's the O's, but I think 75s are a pretty good mark. So I can't sing. I need someone to back me up. Very happy. Hip hip. Yay. Hip hip. Yay. Hip hip. Yay. Happy birthday. Grab yourself a newsletter on your way out so you know what's going on. And you will now have a Bible reading for you by Thelma. Bible reading this morning is taken from Jeremiah chapter 28 verses 5 to 9 and my Bible tells me the true prophet Jeremiah confronts the false prophet Hananiah. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet Hananiah before the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. He said, Amen. Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. From early times, the prophets 
who preceded you and me have prophesied war, disaster and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognised as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. Amen. Um, and so we're about to have the chat with the kids and one thing that I forgot to do is welcome a few people here this morning and I thought that's okay when Pete gets up to do the good news he'll welcome them but his telepathy isn't working (coughs) and I didn't actually use my words so it's lovely to have Julie and Julie's husband whose name escapes me Bronte that's right here welcome that's lovely to have you here and we also have Rachel and Becky and Chloe, who are here today as well, visiting for the first time. We're very excited about that. And now we hand over with great trepidation, because Elliot's on chat with the kids today. Good, good, good morning, everybody. Yes, clap now, because you might not be clapping at the end. That's all right. Excellent. So, guys, time to rush down the front. Excellent. Hello, just step back a bit, mate, for a minute. So slide this forward here so everybody can see. All right. Now, before we start, I'm going to get something off my chest this morning. Um, and I'm in a safe place, yes? Church, family, yes? So we can say things and things are okay. Um, I went on holidays a couple of weeks ago because it needed his um, um, birthday. And she was a... Um, another year older, and um, I missed out on the pie floaters that we had here for two weeks, and I didn't have a single pie floater, and we were really upset, as you can tell, by that, and um, Natalie asked me to do the kids' chat this morning, and I was very excited I got the meeting theme, because I thought, great, I could talk about one of my favourite subjects, all right? Of course, I bought some to come on today, some different types, so here we have some peas in their jacket. Oh. Oh. I've got some pea and ham soup. Pea and ham soup. Oh. And this of course is peas. <laughs> like today we're talking about God's peas, right? So um, these are, um, <laughs> if, I, if I mention Anita's birthday again, these become airborne peas. Right? So, that's right. so just in case that does happen, I bought the of my injury frozen peas. So <laughs> today we'll talk about God's peas, yeah? We'll go with that? What? No? Sure. But we're talking, hang on. Just, no, just got a text, hang on. Oh. God's peas. And don't talk about my birth and don't talk about my birthday. Um all right, okay. <clears throat> all right. Uh, so forget about them for a minute, all right? Um, what we might, what we might do. Uh, now, every good children's story has a backup, and I should have had one a couple of weeks ago. So I've learnt my lesson. So here we have a container of water, and no, we're not going to grow peas this morning. All right. So, all right. So, at great expense, I bought my last packet of plastic straws along. So these, these are worth about forty-five dollars each. So would you like to choose a straw? Okay, there's a straw for you, straw for you, oh, straw for you, and hey, Maddie, hang on, straw for you, Caden. And these are definitely not... You take, oh, let go, should I, sorry. Right, so, today we're going to have a competition. Wait, is it to blow in the water? Sort of. Oh. So today, I'm going to take you on to the challenge. I bought my favourite bath toy, all right. and I've got a boat here. All right, believe it or not, does that look like a boat? Does it look like a boat? Excellent. So, I need you guys around this side here, all well with your straws. We're gonna make room for everybody, all right? Okay, that's fine. All right, and I need you to blow the boat from one end here. Can you all squeeze in a bit? Can you all get closer? That's all right. Let me just move out the way first before the waves start. All right. So we're going to time it. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to take you on this morning, all right? I reckon I can beat you in the time, all right? 
and I'm not going to use a straw. Now, the, the band have suggested I might be full of wind. I'm not sure what they mean by that. All right? We can still be friends, but... All right? So, are we ready? Can we make room? Are you ready? I need my, oh, hang on, there's a timer. Hang on. <laughs> you sure you're ready? Yes. Okay, excellent. Oop, oop, oop. Who's blowing? We're ready? Here we go. On your marks. Get set. Nearly ready. Oh, hang on. Ready. Go. Oh, well, the boat's in trouble. <laughs> the boat's sunk in everyone. That, that's often what happens when I go boating. All right. Let's try again. There we go. All right. 12 seconds. Not bad. Do you want another go? See if you can beat that time? Yeah. All right, have another go. See, and this time, try not to sink my boat, all right? So, Ellie doesn't swim very well. All right. All right, are we ready? Uh, you haven't set the time yet. Uh, go, let's go, 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 go. Oh, hey, blow, 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 blow. Oh, we're in trouble. Okay. Well, we'll go with the first 12 seconds, all right? Now, do you reckon I can beat it? No, no, no. Not a chance? Not anymore. Who reckons here I can beat that time? Yes. yes, okay. Well, I'm not going to use a straw, okay? <laughs> All right, are you ready? Do you reckon I can do it? Cheating. Yeah. Cheater. Cheating, Cheater. do you think? Yes. Okay, well, guess what? We won't, we won't have a race, but I'll tell you, I want to tell you a story. Because in the Bible... There's a story about the Jesus disciples and Jesus went on a boat. And do you know what happened? A big, a big storm, wasn't it? And Jesus, what was Jesus doing, do you think, in the storm? So we don't need to put our storms down for a minute. What, what was Jesus doing? What was Jesus doing in the storm? He was what? Coming it down. No, eventually, but what did he do first? Uh, he was sleeping, that's right. And the disciples were all worried because they thought they were going to drown, right? And the waves got really big, and the wind got really strong, and the boat bobbed up and down. And I go, hang on, I don't do seasick very well. Hang on, oh, I can't think of my Okay, so uh, you yeah, don't go boating with me. All right, so and the storm got really, really rough, didn't it? And Jesus stood up and he told the waves to stop, and he told what else to stop? Do you think the wind to stop? And it was calm. It was it was peaceful. Yeah. So sometimes, guys. In life, life gets a bit rough, doesn't it? Life gets stormy and out of control sometimes. And th- I'll take it. Thanks, Lily. Thank you. And we can talk to Jesus and ask him to bring some peace. Yeah? So that's what we're talking about today. And I'm not sure who's preaching today, but they're going to talk to us about being peaceful and God's peace. Yeah? All right. So just so he's. Does anyone want to eat the peas during the meeting? No? Maybe, maybe we could have one. Now, in here are some milk top ones and some chalk ones. So, would you like to take a couple? All right, you take two. It's all right. There you go. You can take two. There you go. Take two. Thanks, mate. Oop, did my boat sink yet? Here's two. All right. And where are you? Trouble? All right. Thank you. So, I want you to remember, you got two? Thank you. I want you guys to remember one thing. When things get really rough and out of control, just like my boat just did then, who are we going to talk to? Who are we going to talk to? Caden? Who are we going to talk to? Who are we yeah, that's all right. Absolutely. Ah, oh, Jesus to help. Okay. All right, guys. Rush back to your seats now and eat your chocolates. Oops. And we're on to the next thing. Thank you. There we go. Awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate the lesson because I know that often it's what's talked about during our kids' time that we take away and we add and remember about what happened at church. So today being the first Sunday of the month, it's time for um, our uh, opportunity to swap over our pastoral prayer names. So we have uh, the opportunity to pray for uh, someone within our church and uh, everyone's welcome to come down and, and grab a name and then on there will be the details of somebody. You can reach out if you'd like to, um, to say, hey, I'm praying for you. Let me know if there's anything that you would like to, for us to pray for. So um, this is a really valuable and a special time of our worship service that we hold. And 
I would encourage you to, to come and, and grab a name and be ready to pray for the, that family or that individual for the month of July. Uh, anyone who's visiting is welcome to participate in this as well. There's no restrictions on that. Um, and so while you come and collect the names, we have a piece that we're going to be listening to called Lord, Listen to Your Children Praying because um, we're all God's children um, and the prayers of each of us are precious to him. All right, thank you. God, we thank you for the opportunity to hold each other tightly um, and to pray and care for one another. And I ask, Lord, that you would cause us to remember that we've uh, selected um, a name or names today to pray for for the month of July. Help us to draw closer as a uh, church fellowship so that we can be a mighty powerful um, impact into the community at large here. We thank you for who you are and what you mean to us and the way in which you will send answers to these prayers. And we thank you for this. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue in our worship today as we give of our tithes and offerings.
Thank you, Howard. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all the abundance that you have provided for us. We thank you for our wealth and our health, for this wonderful country that we live in. You have provided us with so much. We thank you that your son came and died for our sins so that we may forevermore reign with you. There's so much that we can thank you for. Lord, out of the abundance that you have provided for us, please accept our offering here this morning and from those that also provide the resources online too, Lord, we thank you for that and we ask that you take it and use it and bless it for thy service, that through this it may be multiplied and others and people will learn more about you from the resources that we have given back to you today. Lord, you are an awesome God and you reign from heaven above. Lord, you are in control of all that happens here on earth. Nothing happens without reason. And although we are saddened this morning from the news in Nigeria, we know that you have a way of turning tragedy into victory. And so we pray with all our hearts, we earnestly pray that you will be with our comrades there this, today and in the ongoing days and that this, out of this tragedy, victory will come. We believe in prayer, Lord. We believe that as we, what we ask for in your name, is honoured by you. You are an awesome God. Thank you. Amen.
at contribution. A couple of uh, weeks ago, I met Chris, who is uh, John and Roz's son, and he moved to Adelaide and he's been attending um, with us here. And you might notice that he's not sitting next to Roz, and that's because he's in the band. <laughs> Awesome. So I'm sure Rod's really excited to have an offsider there. Yep, he's there. Yeah, so awesome. So welcome, Chris, and thanks for sharing in that way. We're going to sing together before Erica comes and speaks to us about the message that God has placed on her heart. And uh, I chose this song particularly for a line in verse 3, and it's a familiar church hymn that talks about God's faithfulness. And uh, verse 3 says, um, Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth your own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with 10,000 beside I've had a pretty rough week this week I've felt overwhelmed with um, grief and really sorrow to the point and it and it's it's just gotten compounded as the days went on through the week but I could hold on to the fact that my God is faithful and he gives comfort, and he gives peace, and he helps us get through the day. And I know it to be true in my life. And if you'd like to know more about that, come and speak to me. I'm not the world expert, but I can tell you what's happened in my life. And I know that there are plenty of people here who can also testify to that. Amen? Amen. So that's the story that we can share, but we can sing of God's faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. O God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, your compassions, they fail not. As you have been, you forever will be. So let's sing the three verses together. Thanks, Howard.
Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness that is given to us so abundantly, even when we're not as faithful. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning, that we can depend upon. And no matter what day we have, we have bright hope for tomorrow as well. So we just want to acknowledge your goodness in that. And just now we pray for Erica as she comes and delivers your message that you've placed on her heart this day. May we be open and attentive to receive that message. May we learn something new. May we experience something new from listening to your word today. Continue to dwell with us. Give us the focus we require. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. What comes to mind when you hear the word peace? Quiet. Quiet. What else? Car. Car. This is word association. I'm not playing by myself. Others. The word peace. Hippie. Hippie. Hey, that's good. Okay. Anything else? Band. Word peace. Birds. Birds. Anything else? We'll go one more. Uh, a bit disappointed. I'll be honest, when I saw that the theme was peace, the first thing I thought of was Miss Congeniality <laughs> and world peace. Um, and then the second thing I thought of was the biggest book ever known to man, Tolstoy's War and Peace. Who's read it? Oh, there's your homework. Um, I, too, have not read Tolstoy's War and Peace. I then started to think about sayings, and the first one I thought of, and it was word association straight away, was peace and quiet. And that is known as tranquility, freedom from stress or interruptions. I'm pretty sure in 2002, yes, Reese's year of birth, that was my favourite saying. And not because Reese was born, um, but because I was 23 and I had three children under three at home and I'm pretty sure every afternoon I would have ended the day with, I just want some peace and quiet. Um, it's still not happening. Um, and, uh, but there. and then I thought there's other sayings with the word peace in it and the, the next one I came up with was peace of my mind. I think I had an Eliotism. Um, and it, well, I didn't think about peace, I thought of peace being the P-I-E-C-E and I think giving people a piece of your mind is not necessarily very peaceful at all and then I realised what I was going for was peace of mind, which is a bit different, um, a feeling of being safe, freedom from worry. You heard in the scripture earlier that um, it was prophesied that there was a prophet of peace coming. And we heard that from Jeremiah. And he said, if that should come to be. Well, we have the privilege of being here now and knowing that that's exactly what came to be. Does anybody know another prophet from the Old Testament that spoke about a prophet of peace coming? Isaiah. For unto us a child is born... To us the son is given and the government will be upon his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Jesus, Prophet of Peace, Prince of Peace. That's who's coming and that's exactly who came to be. But what does that mean for us? Well, we know that Jesus is called the Prince of Peace because he is our peace offering. He chose to go to the cross and offer himself as a sacrifice for us, for the sins, so that we can have peace with God. He mended our broken relationship with God. He surpassed any good works that we could possibly do to earn it, including providing peace offerings, which is what used to happen before that moment. Jesus is the peace bringer. We often use words like, to be like Jesus, all right? Let's see how good we are. Who knows the chorus? Let's go.
so good. Yeah, a round of applause. Give yourselves a round of applause. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And if we are to be like him, there's a bit of a challenge in that, is there not? Because it's saying that we too are to be people of peace. That is not necessarily easy. Because I don't know about you, but I often, uh, you only have to kind of turn on the TV to see that people are giving their peace of mind before they have peace of mind. And it is happening all around us. Jesus is the restorer, the way maker, and the peace provider. Jesus can provide peace to a troubled world. We can provide peace to a troubled world. During the week, um, Peter and myself and Maddie and one of her friends came upon a situation that I would suggest wasn't very peaceful. And um, these words that I've already used, uh, I used on that day. You see, on Wednesday afternoon, uh, Peter was home and uh, we decided, like we all, one of us at least always does, unless it's raining, because then Maddie walks home on her own, um, we decided to walk up to the Maddie's school and um, to walk her home. And as we got, we got the back entrance and there's an oval and the kids all come out of that door and there's a gate and there's a bit of a cobblestone sort of, not really a road, like a driveway type thing and then the road. And we came out of the school gate and Madison threw her ball at me and because I have zero ball skills, I did not catch it. I kind of went like this and it bounced, it bounced, it bounced and it rolled and touched a car. Well, the lady who was behind the wheel of the car, the car was parked on the side of the road, got out of the car and gave me her peace of mind. She was incredibly upset. She was incredibly aggressive. She uh, used quite threatening language. And I said to her, I am so sorry. Like, I, I really am sorry. It was an accident. The ball didn't hit your car. It rolled and touched it. There is no damage. I'm really sorry. In that moment, she did not want to hear my apologies. She demanded our name and our phone number because she was going to go home and check for damage and call us later. And at that point, I said to Pete, I'm going to take the girls. And I walked away with the girls. And he said, I'm not giving you our name and number. I can see the car's fine. I'm really sorry that we've offended you. And we left. My words to Maddie were, I had to let Dad take over at that point because I was going to give her a piece of my mind. <laughs> and uh, no one needed to hear that. I don't know what was going on in her world, not a clue, but I can tell you in that moment I had a choice to make. I could have been a person of peace or an agitator of the situation. I chose to walk away and Peter became the person of peace. <laughs> there is darkness, there is pain, there is confrontation, but what we know is that Jesus is triumphant. Jesus is the peace bringer. And regardless of the darkness that is present in this world today, we can remember the words for him from him in John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. And John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let it be fearful. We can be people of peace. We can enter situations and choose how we're going to respond, to be like Jesus or to not be like Jesus, I guess, in that moment. We just looked at the fact that the world has turmoil and, and trouble and that we can choose to how we want to be in that situation. But I think that Jesus didn't just come to bring priest to the world, to our external world. I really truly believe, and Belinda already touched on it, that Jesus came to bring peace to our world, our inner world, our mind and our heart. <clears throat> we are already reconciled and at peace with God through salvation in Christ we can experience the peace of God in the middle of our circumstances, our anxious thoughts. We can live at peace with our brothers and sisters in Christ. However, in this world, our peace is constantly under attack. 
We are human, or at least I know I am. Therefore, I am subject to both emotional and mental struggles like fear and worry. Our human habits often rear their ugly heads, and there are many things that disturb the peace in our lives today. Am I alone in that? I hope not. Well, I hope yes, but I know that's not the case. How often are we guilty of giving ourselves a piece of our mind instead of peace of mind? Just like this lady at the school who kind of blew up and lost it at us, our minds can also lose it at us. Anxiety, stress, fear, pain, regret, getting stuck in a circle of turmoil, staying up at night because our minds will not rest. The trouble is that often the lack of peace that happens on the inside becomes a lack of peace on the outside and it can affect our relationships, our work and the way we respond in situations where we could be a person of peace but because we ourselves are not at peace, it doesn't translate. Can you keep your eyes on the Prince of Peace? Isaiah 26.3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. The Hebrew word for stayed means to lean or rest on. We lean on Jesus. We rest in him. We focus our minds and hearts on his promises. We trust that he can uphold us even when we are distracted by all the things that distract us. Jesus promises peace. The message translation often brings me words of peace, uh, says it in ways that other scriptures do not. And John 14, 27, I love. That's my parting gift to you. Peace. I don't leave you the way you're used to being left, feeling abandoned, bereft. Don't be upset. Don't be distraught. Colossians 3.15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. Christ wants us to be people of peace. God calls us to be agents of peace in the world. But I wonder on our effectiveness of doing that if we are not at peace within ourselves. I don't for one minute pretend that we have a switch inside of us where we go, switch, all right, I'm good, person of peace. Never will I have trouble again. That's not our reality, exactly. That is not our reality. However, we can continue to allow Christ to dwell in us, to work with us, to work on us, and ask him to continue to bring a sense of peace to our hearts and our minds. How do we do this? Well, I wonder whether we can be here for each other. We pray for each other. That happens here at Ingle Farm. Can we pray for each other? Can we share each other's burdens so that they are shared and halved? You've heard that saying. Joy is double, pain halved if we share in community. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension or understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, is yours for the taking, is yours to hold to, to guard your hearts and your minds Choosing today to bring your troubles to him, choose to allow the Prince of Peace to guard your heart and your mind so that you can have a peace of mind as opposed to allowing your inner turmoil to end up giving others a peace of your mind. Today I invite you to come anew to Jesus, to lay your turmoil and your troubles at the feet of Jesus. Come and be renewed. Allow the the peace of God which surpasses all understanding to guard your hearts and your minds. 
There are a lot of people in the world that do not know the peace of God. They don't know that it's available to them and as a result, they live their lives in turmoil. You can choose how to demonstrate that peace. You can choose what it is that you are going to bring to a situation. But again, I ask, if we are not at peace, how do we be people of peace? The next song that we're going to sing speaks about the turmoil that the world is in. Beautiful words. Beautiful words. But it does speak a lot about the other. And I think we as Christians and honestly as salvationists are very good at ignoring what's happening for us so that we can help others. I guess today I'm challenging you to take a moment and ask yourself, are you at peace? Are you allowing that peace of God that's beyond all understanding to deal with all of the things that woes on within ourselves? As we sing this song, I'm going to ask two things for you, for you to do, two things for me. I'm going to ask for you to physically and verbally, if you wish, to invite God to be that inner strength and peace for you, first and foremost, before you take that peace into the world. You may want to do that by simply opening your hands and laying them in your lap as you sing this song and saying, I invite you. You may want to hold the hand of the person beside you and say, I don't want to do this alone anymore. You may want to get out of your seat and go to someone and say, I'm, I'm not at peace. And um, I just want you to know that so we can journey this together. You may want to come to the place of prayer and put your hands out as a way of saying, physically I acknowledge that there's a lot going on in here and maybe I haven't, to my fullest ability, invited you into that for whatever reason. And maybe you have. But in our humanness, we revert to the ways of old and go, but I got it, <clears throat> it's all good. That's the physical response. Lay your hand in your lap, grab the hand of the person beside you, come forward go to be with someone, whatever it is that is for you. The other thing I'm going to do or ask you to do is to change the words of this song. Can we have the words up of the, of the song? There are people hurting in the world out there and it says they need you, they need me, they need Christ. I'm going to ask if we sing the words, I need you, you need me. We need Christ. And just for this moment, acknowledge that it starts with us in order for us to serve the ones that are out there. I need you. We need community. You need me. And we, us and the world out there, we need Christ. So physically responding to that invitation to accept a peace beyond all understanding to come and reign supreme within us. And then acknowledge that we are not apart from the troubles of the world, but we know the answer to it. We need Christ to be the people of peace that leaves this building or our homes out there. There are four verses um, I think we're going to sing them straight through. I need you, you need me, we need Christ. Let's sing together.
Galatians 5.22 is a scripture about the fruits of the Spirit and it speaks about one of the fruits of the Spirit being peace. We invite Christ to be a part of us and to deal with our inner turmoil. Then the way we act and the fruit of our actions include that of peace. I'm going to read the message version of that to you now. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Today, my prayer is that you find peace and rest in him. Or as that scripture says it, serenity. I invite you today to lay your anxiety, stress, fear, pain, regret, getting stuck in the circle of turmoil, staying up all night, and not at peace, heart and mind, at the feet of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord God, you know what goes on inside of us. You know the internal dialogue. You know the emotions that happen inside of us. But today, Lord, we lay it all at the feet of Jesus and we ask for a peace that is beyond all understanding to dwell within us, individually, as a community, so that when we step outside these doors, when we walk down the street, when we drive our cars, the first thing that happens is the fruit of peace, not a peace of our mind. Lord, you've got us. You are the prophet of peace. You are the prince of peace. And we are your agents. Help us to be the best agents we can. And pray these things in your precious name. Amen. Well, we started the day uh, looking at our founders with that very cute cartoon, Little Love Heart Eyes, that's the part that got me, and singing O Boundless Salvation, I'll be honest with you, I I really struggled to stop it too, I've been conditioned to sing all seven straight through. But we are going to finish the meeting in a similar way with a very well-known Salvo's tune, and the Lord's command is to go into the world and preach the gospel unto all. My question to you as you sing this with gusto, I loved the gusto the band brought at the end of Boundless Salvation, they're going to bring it again. The Lord's command is to go into the world. Who are you going as? Are you going as people with peace of mind? Are you going out there to give people a peace of your mind? A challenge and a thought. Let's stand and sing. I have no songbook. How many verses are there? Three. Oh, we're going to sing them straight through. All right, let's sing. Thank you.
and a benediction. Go now and rejoice in the Lord always. Do not be afraid or worried about anything, but in everything trust God and pray. Bear fruits worthy of repentance, sharing what you have and being gentle with all. And may God rejoice over you with gladness. May Christ Jesus renew you in his love. And may the Holy Spirit give you peace beyond all understanding to guard your hearts and minds in Christ. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, everybody says, Amen. Thank you.